Hi everyone, this is Sarah. Welcome to this walkthrough of Exercise 4 from Technical Writing 2. Exercise 4 is all about tutorials. So as a trainer, don't spend too much time on this slide. Just let your students know that they're about to do the final part of the tutorial, or sorry, the final part of the class, which is focused on tutorials and then move straight on to the next slide. So this slide is a little bit hard to understand. So let people have some time to take a look at this slide. Explain to them that it shows a tutorial, but it's quite a bad example of a tutorial. Let people know that the audience for this tutorial is programmers who are fairly new to Linux. And then read the tutorial to your students. A here document is a kind of document created here by the cat command. Issue a cat command that ends with chevron chevron word. When you finish typing, type word. Give people a little bit more time to absorb the tutorial on this slide and then ask them to spend some time chatting to their partners about this tutorial and listing the points about it that could be improved. Um, you'll probably be giving this session in remote mode, which means that your students will have two sessions running, two um, video conference sessions running. So let them know that they should move over to the video conference session with their partner and discuss this tutorial. Let them know that you'll give them two minutes. And then after two minutes, bring them back and list some points that we have found that are to be improved in this tutorial. You'll find the points in the speaker's notes on this slide. So you could say, for example, what about the example? Is it a good example? There isn't an example. And then you could start listing the, the points that could be improved. So it's a poor definition of a here document because the definition contains the same words as the term itself. That's very hard to understand. And what about the list? It's um, actually hard to know what the list is telling us how to do because there's no proper introduction to the list. Um, typographically, the command cat should be a fixed width font so that people know it's a command. And the term here document should be in bold text rather than in quotes. Then using that word word as an example is confusing. We should let people know that it's just an example of a string that you can use when kicking off a here document. And most importantly, this tutorial does not point out a dragon, which is that the string that you use must appear on a line by itself at the end of the here document. So as a trainer, after reading through those points, let people know that the, the basic problem is that the curse of knowledge is everywhere in this tutorial. And now we're going to show you two slides con containing a better tutorial for here documents and move on to the next slide. So as you can see on this slide, the text that is in square brackets and in red kind of is a commentary on the tutorial and the tutorial itself is in ordinary black text. So explain to your students that First of all, in this tutorial, we provide a conceptual overview of the topic, which is here documents. And then we reinforce the concept with some examples and read a little bit of the text. So for example, consider the WC-C command, which counts the number of characters in input. Let your students know that we do some comparing and contrasting. So maybe you might use WC-C to count the number of characters in a disk file, but now you want to count the number of characters that you type. And this is where a here document is particularly useful. Then move on to slide two, which is a continuation of the um, example of the improved tutorial. So on this slide, we have an example at the top of the slide. 
And then we provide more details about the example. And most importantly, as well, we point out the dragon. So we note that the string, in this case, the string is foo, should appear on a line by itself. So as a trainer, you'd now move on to the next slide. And the next thing you're going to ask your students to do is to actually go ahead and write a tutorial. In this case, it's a for loop tutorial. So tell your students that you are going to give them 10 minutes to work by themselves and that you'll then ask if anyone else needs any more time. This is interesting. So the first time I ran this class, I asked people after 10 minutes if they wanted more time and a large number of people did. Uh, most recently when I've asked, actually 10 minutes has been long enough. So just see how it goes with your particular students. Um, before they start, let the students know that they must choose their audience for this tutorial. So they can choose either students learning their first language who don't yet know what loops are, or they can choose people who already know at least one language but are now learning a new language. For example, perhaps the audience already knows C or C++ but is now learning Python. So your students must choose one of those audiences and then they must write the start of a tutorial on for loops. They'll probably want to choose the programming language that they're going to write for as well. Um, we chose Python. So yeah, let them know that you'll give them 10 minutes and then let them go and start writing. And um, you may find after 10 minutes that people don't need more time. That's fine. Otherwise, give them another five minutes. Then move on to the next slide. So this is the peer review part of this, this particular um, exercise. Give people three minutes to review their partner's work. Then bring them back to your video conference session and let them know you're going to show them some example solutions. In this case, the first example is a tutorial for new programmers and let them know that later on you're going to show them a tutorial for uh, Python, for um, people who already know a language and the language they already know in this case is C or C++. Also, we have chosen Python as the programming language that we're going to illustrate. So, this tutorial starts with a rationale for four loops. Remember that the audience here is people who don't know programming at all. And the sample code on the next slide is quite short. Given the time, so there are actually three parts to this example because being new programmers, they need a lot of introduction, a lot of conceptual material. Let your, your students know that um, given the time constraints for this class, this actual example is actually quite abbreviated. And you might ask your students, what else a tutorial for this audience should show? And your students may come up with answers like, you should give lots more examples, including a numeric example and statements other than print statements. Um, they might say that you should include the syntax of a for statement. There are lots of valid answers. And then move on to the next slide, which is the second example solution for a for loop tutorial. And in this case, our audience is C and C++ programmers who are learning Python. So they need to know how to do a for loop in Python, but they already know about loops in other languages. So notice that um, this tutorial can be quite a lot shorter. It's only two slides. So this is the second part of the example. And um, we use the compare and contrast technique. So we say, the tutorial explains Python's for loop. We've aimed this tutorial at C programmers who are new to Python. So the tutorial already assumes that you already know at least a bit about both print statements and lists in Python. Make sure that your students understand as a trainer that um, 
the audience in this case already has some knowledge and therefore the compare and contrast technique is useful. And this is the second part. So there's a nice example with some printed output. And again, because our students already have a fair bit of knowledge, we could add extra concepts into this tutorial. So this tutorial actually includes mention of the break and continue statements, which are not in the example for um, new programmers. And that's it. That is the end of section four. It's the end of the tutorial section. And it's also very close to the end of the Tech Writing 2 class. Thanks for attending this walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. <laughs>